I had a request to show how I put on my wig from a reader of my blog. This is for you. You know who you are. Here's what you need. Alright, now that we know what we need to make our wig fantastic, first things first, on the day of a fesh, I won't wash my hair. It makes my hair too slippery and my bobby pins don't clip in as well, they don't stay, and my wig combs just don't stay as well. So I don't wash my hair. Alright, sectioning off your hair. The first thing I do is my poof. And to get my hair right for my poof, what I do is I measure from the corner of my eyes upwards. It's really easy. I suppose you could use your rat tail comb to do this if you want to make it really, really perfect. I'm not really too concerned about that because it's going to be pinned up anyways, and if you have enough hair, it'll work. As you can see, it's probably about an inch, an inch and a half deep in my hair. And taking that section that you just did, and one of your many bobby pins, I will clip this out of the way, so that way it doesn't get mixed up in the rest of the hair that I have not sectioned off. For the rest of my hair, as you can see, I have a lot of it. To do the top half, I make it like I'm doing a half ponytail. And bring it up like this. I try and make the sections even, but I just do that by feel. So if they feel about even, then that's good. Before I twist this into a bun, I like to get some of the bumps out of my hair. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this part. You don't have to because if you have a long enough wig, then they'll be covered when you put your headband in, and that'll be fine. It's all up to personal preference. Anyways, twisting this into a bun, I twist it around my fingers until it's nice and tight, and then just curl it around itself. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, and it might be really high, it might be really small. Either way, we're going to use our poodle sock to get all that situated. Taking one of my hair ties, I'll wrap it around the base. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, this is just to secure your wig combs so that way your wig doesn't fall out. For the back section, I will divide it in half, like this, and make two buns at the nape of my neck. Ta-da! You should now have three buns in your hair, and it'll look slightly ridiculous, but that you, they won't be seen once you put your wig on. Moving on to the poof. Take your bobby pin out from the section that you have held away. I like to brush mine up, and then because I have a little bit of side banks, need a lot of hairspray. Now that you've fumigated yourself, and probably gotten in your eyes, first thing I do is brush up part in the front so that way it starts looking nice. And now I section it out and I tease. To tease, you just take your comb and brush downwards. This will give lift to your poof and make it really nice and big and able to see it in front of your wig. There. Now your hair probably looks extremely ridiculous. I take the parts that I've just teased and I spray it a little bit again just because now my bangs are starting to fall out. Just a little bit spray. And I brush the front a little bit to make it nice and neat because the teasing put a little bit of snarls in the front of my hair and you don't want that. You want it to look nice and neat. Alright. I take this section and I pin it. I use about four bobby pins here. And what I do is I just pin it in front of the bun that we made. And I cross the bobby pins over. You might need to fix your poof so it looks even. And you want it to be fairly big, like mine's really huge right now. When you put your wig on, it might deflate a little bit. So you want to make it as big as possible before you put your wig on pinning it with your bobby pins. Ta-da! Your poof is done. We have one last thing we need to do before we put our wig on, and that's to put this on in your hair. 
If you have a wig donut, you could also use one of those, but I just use a sock because I'm a broke college student. So we tie our sock around our top bun for extra lift and height in our wig. Now your head should look something like this. Alright, the wig. I like to pin or to clip it in from the top first. So I will take the top comb. You see it has a top comb and a bottom comb. The top comb, you can usually tell because there's a lace part and that goes on the top. Top comb gets flipped up and under my bun. Bottom portion, the clips hook under the two buns and hopefully it should stay fairly well, enough for you to at least arrange it. Now here's the part I was talking about your poof. You want to make your poof big, because as you can see mine deflated a little bit. So because it deflated, you can either take your fingers and pull it back up, do what I'm doing, or you can take your rat tail comb. Either way, it doesn't matter. Just try and get some life back into your poof. And that's your wig on your head. So from the side, it looks like this. The last step before you're done is your headband. Now I made my headband myself and I took a headband that I bought at a drugstore and covered it with material from my dress and rhinestones to kind of match. Because I made it myself, I could not really put, you know, strings to clip it. So my ghetto version is to take little rubber hair ties that you put in your hair and I just stick them on the end of my headband. That way the bobby pins to secure it have something to stick to. It's worked so well. It's worked well so far. I haven't had any problems with my headband falling off in, gosh, over a year. So, headband. I take my headband and I arrange it. I kind of put it in straight up and down like this. It's personal preference. You can put it in more sideways like this. Depends. I just like mine to look like it's covered by my wig hair. And that is my completed wig look. Now, of course, before a competition, I would pin the crap out of my wig. Um, I usually pin two at the back and put them right into my buns, two on the side, and two in the front on each side. I make sure when I do my bobby pins that they cross and make an X and they lock so they don't fall out. I also will pin my headband in at the little rubber ponytails that I was showing you earlier, so that way that doesn't fall out. Um, for purposes now, because I'm actually not going to competition, I'm just making this on a random day, I am not going to pin my wig because it takes a lot of time. But do pin your wig because I've been in competition, my wig fell off, and it sucked. Don't make my mistake. For all those who are wondering, because I'm sure you probably are, this is the Analog Wig by Camilla Rose. It's color number six, I think, which is a really dark brown. It's not the darkest they have. It's kind of, I think, the third darkest. But it's just the one that was basically closest to my hair color and looked nice with all of my features. I'm not one of those people who, although I'm a brunette in real life, would want to go blonde. I just, I could not do that. Um, I like it. I got it a few weeks ago. I'm going to wear it for the first time at the Arachnids. I've had an emerald key wig. I think it was the Tory that I wore for about a year and a half. And that one's really good too. I just like, this one's a little longer. It has a little more length. And that's, I guess, the style right now. And I think it looks really good. So this is the first time I ever put it on. Congratulations, you got to share that with me. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you as you're preparing for the Arachnids. Whether it's your first or your twelfth, wish you good luck and happy dancing.